Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. And this one, as promised, is gonna be the gaming benchmark on the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. Uh, if you recall, the M1 Max is the one with the 32 core GPU. So it's gonna give you the best graphics capability on this entire platform. And in this video, we're gonna be testing out 12 games that are native to Mac OS and actually, I should clarify, it's not native to macOS, but first party support on macOS. So games that have been either ported over or written on Mac, written for macOS. Now, before we begin talking about the numbers, let's talk about the testing methodology. Generally, I run all the games at native resolution and try to bump up the graphics as much as I can to get still maintaining a playable frame rate. So the native resolution is 3467 by 2234. However, a 16 by 10 uh, resolution is I think actually only 2160. So uh, either way, I'm gonna be calling that native resolution. And so for the first game is gonna be World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is a game that has been on Mac OS since basically forever, and this game generally runs really well. However, over the last few recent years, as these MacBooks get larger and larger in resolution, quality suffers and you have to decrease the resolution. However, this 16 inch MacBook Pro running at the native resolution for the screen is able to drive the game very well, even at a high graphics quality. So by high, I mean uh, seven on the slider. Um, you're able to get anywhere from 75 to 120 or more frames per second, depending on what is on the screen. Of course, the more people, the more particle, particle effects you have, you're gonna be closer to that 75 FPS mark. Uh, if you're looking at a wall or looking at a small room, 20, 120 or more. So. It is very playable and the gaming experience is very good. Next on this list is Diablo 3. Diablo 3 is also a Blizzard game that has been coded for Mac OS. And this game, again, running at native resolution at completely maxed out settings runs extremely well on the system on the M1 Max. The in-game FPS is at least 100 FPS at almost all times and generally bounces between 120 to 140 depending on what you're doing. Uh, of course, when you're in combat, it's gonna be closer to that 100, but in general, again, you're really pushing a lot of frames in this game. The next game on this list is StarCraft II and uh, this is also another game that has been developed on Mac OS, for Mac OS by Blizzard. And this game is actually surprisingly difficult to drive at extremely high resolutions. At native resolution, with all the graphics setting to high, you're actually only getting somewhere around 30 FPS. But uh, if you're able to drop the shaders from high to medium, then all of a sudden your graphics FPS goes up to 90 or almost 100 FPS. So, of course, that's kind of how I would recommend settings uh, everything on high with the shaders to medium and uh, even at native resolution this game runs really well uh, with those settings so it's a very enjoyable experience at 90 fps the next game on this list is shadow of the tomb raider this game is developed by square enix and out of the 12 games, it is the most graphically intensive game and also the best looking game on this list. This game is particularly well coded and is able to uh, run relatively well even with such a high graphics fidelity. For example, at a native resolution with settings completely maxed out, the game is still able to run at at least an average of 35 FPS per the in-game benchmark. Uh, if 35 FPS isn't enough for you, you can certainly drop down the uh, resolution down to something closer to 2160 by 1440, for example. And at this resolution, you're able to sustain an average FPS of 67. 
depending on what you want here, you're able to custom tailor your FPS settings uh, by just changing the resolution while keeping everything at still the highest graphical settings. As a side note here, the mini LED display on the MacBook Pro is HDR capable and in the game there is an option to enable HDR and from my preliminary testing, it does look like it does actually make a difference. The next game on this list is Civilization VI. This game has been out for a handful of years now, but it still seems to be a relatively graphics intensive game or CPU intensive game, depending on what you have on the screen. In the settings here, the highest resolution that I was able to select was a 1728 by 1117 or somewhere around a 1080p resolution. And at a high settings, using the in-game benchmark, uh, I was able to achieve a 12 millisecond frame time, which generally translates to about 50 FPS overall. Um, and if 50 FPS isn't enough for you, so in that test, there were some scenes with like around 30, 40 FPS and some scenes around 60, 80, 90 FPS. So that's where you get an average of 50. So if that's not enough for you, you can always drop down the quality down to medium. And at the medium settings at that resolution, you get a more steady 65 FPS. So uh, the lows aren't as low anymore. So that is, quite a bit better in, in, in the playability. And I think this is you know, probably what you want to use for settings for this game. The other benchmark test in Civ 6 is the AI uh, CPU test, which tests how long it takes for every turn. On average, you end up with a 10 second turn time. Moving on to the next game, which is Stellaris. This is a 4X game uh, with sprawling maps and space combat. Uh, this game running at native resolution with the high graphic setting. I loaded up a old map that I was playing on, and, which had a big sprawling empire. And the in-game FPS was anywhere from 65 to 80 FPS. Next on this list is Batman Arkham City. This game is ported over from the Windows edition and is available on the Steam store. And this game is, is, is at least a few years old at, at this point. Uh, it's not the newest sit, uh, game. And I wanna say this game is built on Unreal Engine. So at native resolution with uh, the graphics turned up, which is high detail, very high effects and high shadows, you're able to get an average of 111 FPS with the in-game benchmark. And when you're doing an actual in-game, you know, playing in-game, you get anywhere from 90 to 150 FPS, the FPS bounces around. Uh, again, the screen is only good for up to 120 FPS. So anything over that is, is really overkill, but you're able to get relatively high frame rates and the gaming experience is pretty fluid. Now that they're all taken care of, it's time to get what I came for out of that safe. The next game that I tested was Bioshock Remastered, and this game is at least 12 or 13 years old now. And uh, even though it is an old game at native resolution of 4K and at such a high pixel per inch, and at max setting, it actually looks pretty good, especially the ultra stylized world and dark moody setting with this mini LED screen and the really good contrast that you get from the screen looks actually pretty good. So with max settings and native resolution, uh, you're able to drive the game anywhere from 100 to 150 FPS, sometimes even more depending on the scene. So the, you know, this is completely overkill and hardware for this game, but uh, you can play this game very, very well. Oh 
The next game that I tested is Borderlands 2. This game came out, I want to say 2012. So it's, it's, a, it's a few years old now at this point. But at a native resolution, you have near 4K resolution with max settings. I was able to get anywhere from 60 to 80 FPS. So it's a solid 60 to 80 FPS motion. The combat is pretty fluid and the gaming experience is pretty decent. For the next two games, I decided to go to the Steam store and see what was the most popular games on Mac OS. And you had CSGO and Dota. So I went ahead and downloaded the two free to play games. Honestly, I have never played CSGO and I don't, I'm not a Dota player. So I really didn't know what I was doing in those games, but still I was able to get some, some footage and some tests or some FPS numbers. In CSGO, at the native resolution with graphics fidelity on auto high. Uh, the in-game FPS was anywhere from 40 FPS to 70 FPS. You know, of course, if you're indoors, it goes even higher, maybe over 100 FPS, but anywhere from 40 to 70 FPS <laughs> on uh, outdoor maps. Now, I realized that CSGO players really like high FPS, so if 40 to 70 is not enough for you, you can drop the resolution down to 2560 by 1600. Uh, this is around 1600p, so that's that's still more than a what 27 inch monitor's resolution. Uh, in that, if you do that, then the in-game FPS is going to be somewhere closer to 50 to 80 FPS. I still, if that's not enough for you, you can always drop the, the quality down a little bit um, lower from high to medium and the FPS will go up. Uh, it just all depends on what kind of a gaming experience you want. But still, 40 to 70, 50 to 80, that is still a very playable FPS on this computer. And then, as I mentioned, I tested out Dota 2. In this game, if you set the graphics setting to maximum and basically check every single box and then run the game at a native resolution, you can see anywhere from 100 to 110 uh, FPS in game. This is, this is, you know, this game runs really well. It's, it's not that graphically intensive and it's nice to see that it runs pretty well in this game. The last game on this list is League of Legends, and as you can imagine, League of Legends should run pretty well. So at native resolution, the near 4K resolution, uh, at completely maxed out settings, the in-game FPS is anywhere from 100 to 150 FPS. With many characters on the screen and in combat, you're going to be seeing closer to that 100, 100 FPS. When you're just yourself running around, that's going to be closer to the 150. 150 is still over the 120 FPS of Hertz of the screen, so that's still completely overkill. So uh, needless to say, League of Legends runs really well on this system. An enemy has been slain. Let me kind of summarize my general experience in testing all these games and gaming on this computer because in general, the M1 Max is a very, very powerful GPU, CPU and GPU. Uh, with the 32 cores, in most Mac games, you're gonna be seeing anywhere from 50 to 70 FPS on the low end, and then some older games you're gonna be seeing 100 or more FPS. And the thing is, being the most powerful uh, graphics chip on Mac, if you're loading up any first party Mac game, or no, I shouldn't say that. If you're loading up any game that has first party Mac support, then you can almost be guaranteed that that's gonna be running very well because this is twice as powerful than the previous 16 inch MacBook Pro's, Pro's GPU. And just in general, it's, it's gonna be killing 
overkill for, for anything like that. Now, this test did not test out uh, Windows games in parallels or Windows games in crossover. That, that might have to be a completely different video, but just in general, if it's natively supported on Mac OS, then it's gonna be running pretty fine, pretty good. And as you can see, games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider or Tomb, The Rise of the Tomb Raider, which I tested off screen here, those games are really, really pretty and really graphically intensive, but still are coded in a way that runs really good. So that said, you know, gaming on a MacBook Pro is doable as long as it, the game is supported on Mac OS. Anyway, hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight into how powerful the M1 Max chips are in gaming. And if you have any games that you want me to test out that is supported natively on Mac OS, go ahead and comment down below and I'll see if I can get my hands on it. And perhaps in a later video, we'll do another round of tests on these games on this Mac, MacBook Pro. Anyway, Hopefully this video was useful for you guys. And if it was, you can go ahead and give it a like. And if you wanna see more videos on the MacBook Pro or tech videos in general, go ahead and consider subscribing. As always, my name is Stan and I'll see you guys in the next one.